Hey guys, so the past couple nights I've been trying to figure out how to track the space station with my Paramount MYT and two days ago I actually was successful so I wanted to take you along with trying to capture a transit of the space station. So there's a scheduled transit tonight at uh, about 7.50 so I'm going to take you along and hopefully show you how I take images of the space station. To prepare for the ISS transit, there's this website I use called uh, CalSky, calsky.com backslash question mark ISS. So this is pretty helpful in starting to plan out uh, the exposure times and where the transit's going to be. So you can see here um, on Tuesday, April 7th, we have a visible transit from my location in Cave Creek, Arizona, and we have some pretty useful elements as to what the transit's going to be like. Um, the one I'm really concerned about is the uh, the magnitude at culmination or at meridian. This is going to tell us how bright it's going to get so I can pre-plan uh, the proper exposure time that I want to shoot the ISS. So what I'm going to end up doing is finding a star that's about the same magnitude and then I'm going to properly expose that star and we're going to use that exposure time to expose for the ISS. If we click here we can also see it on a ground track. And we can also see it on a star chart. So here's the ground track. You can see it cuts through Phoenix, Arizona, and it's gonna be above the horizon invisible. Let's check out the star track. So here we can see where it's gonna pass over in the sky. So this looks like, I can't tell what the cardinal directions are in this, but it's up in the sky and it's gonna be relatively high over the horizon, so it should be a good pass. So the problem with tracking the ISS is your telescope needs to be really good at knowing where it is and knowing when it is. So to solve the problem of knowing where it is and also kind of when it is, um, what you're gonna wanna do is have a nice pointing model. So I have like a an 81 point pointing model here with a pretty good pointing RMS. So this makes sure that, you know, my scope knows where it's pointed pretty much all the time, no matter where it goes. So I should have pretty good pointing accuracy when I try to go to the ISS. The other thing I'm doing is I'm running D4T, which refreshes the system clock time every five seconds, I believe. So this makes sure that my system has the right time inputted, which is also really important to tracking the ISS. The other thing you're going to want is to make sure you have updated um, satellite TLEs going into the transit. I actually do this like a couple minutes before. I just go to satellites, I go import from web, and then I make sure I have ISS and I download the new orbital elements. And that'll make sure everything's up to date because the ISS does do um, orbit correction burns. And you want to make sure you know about those. All right, so here's the setup I'm using right now to catch the space station. Um, ideally, I'd want a bigger telescope than the one that I have. I have a, the Orion ED80 TCF, 480 millimeters focal length. Um, I have everything on the Paramount. Uh, this, of course, is the basis for me being able to track the space station in the first place. Uh, the camera I've got, I have the uh, ZWO ASI 183mm. It has really tiny pixels, so it samples quite nicely on the ED80. I'm at uh, 1.04 arc seconds per pixel. So it's about the most resolution I can squeeze out of the scope, but also this gives me a really big uh, chip or field of view to catch the space station in the first place. And you can use all the field of view you can get when you're trying to track a satellite like that. So um, it's a pretty easy setup for finding the space station as it is. Let me go ahead and Park him so you guys can watch it slew. All right, so it's just about go time here, and uh, the transit's going to start northwest. So what you want to do is get your telescope pointed close to where it's gonna come up above the horizon. So I have it pointed northwest right now. Uh, it's gonna cut through some higher declinations and it's actually not gonna be able to track through those. 
it's hard for the equatorial mount or any equatorial mount to slew quickly across places where there's high declination around the poles. So it's gonna cut um, tracking somewhere around here, but we'll be able to re-pick it up again somewhere more towards the east. So yeah, wish me luck. So as you probably could have seen there, um, I misinterpreted where the ISS was going to be in the sky. And uh, I was kind of confused because I set up my camera pointing in the wrong direction. And in my confusion, I actually forgot to adjust the exposure back down. See, um, I kept the gain really high so I could see the ISS as it was approaching into the field and becoming more illuminated. And um, yeah, I kind of messed that up. I forgot to turn the gain back down. So all, like all the data is overexposed, but the pass wasn't that much better than it was on the first attempt, first successful attempt. So I've included that footage here and shown you the image, but tracking it went well. Uh, setting the exposure properly didn't go well, but hopefully this helps you guys um, track the ISS if you have a paramount at least.